In this example in the video, we're going to be selecting the Medentica EV series um, and then we're going to go into transparent mode, box select and create these analog assemblies. Then I'm going to copy them and I'm just going to move those two to the side. I've also been told that we are using different ones as well for the anteriors and posteriors. So in transparent mode, select the top of it and then box select and then link it to make an assembly and we're going to copy that. So we've got two um, couples of um, different ones. Then we're going to, I'm just going to hide the upper model and move these temporarily next to the ones that we want to align them to. And we're going to do the same thing to the other ones, just so that we don't get confused which ones we need to align to which uh, interoral scans. There's a few different techniques we can use in aligning these with the ICP alignment module. In this one I will show you one technique. I've actually aligned it quite close. Name the moving object and the destination and then we're going to paint the entire thing in transparent mode and then apply that. Then we're going to paint the destination. Make sure that you do uh, get rid of the inside, otherwise it disturbs the ICP calculation. Select both and then perform ICP. You can always hit the perform ICP uh, two times or three times and then when you are satisfied, click on confirm. I'm going to be doing the same technique with the next one. So that becomes our moving object and our destination object. Moving, destination, color the moving. Go into transparent mode because then you get to select all the vertices all the way. And notice which vertices I do select like in a common area between the two. And then again, make sure you, with the circular select and the mouse wheel down to get rid of those vertices and then ICP align them and I've hit the ICP two times and then I'm going to confirm it. I'm going to show you a different technique. Here what I'm going to do is we're going to use the pointers, the landmarks. So again the moving object and the destination object has been defined. Place the landmarks so here you've got to be um, smart in where you're placing them. We want the Z, the up and down, to be locked in. So And then also the flat surface is quite important. Perhaps the edge of the flat surface and on the other side as well. And then do the same to the destination object and always get the sequence, the order, in the correct order. So select both, perform, and then perform the ICP. And in this instance, I've got quite a good ICP and we're gonna just perform it again and exit. I'm going to do the same one. This technique seems to be a little bit easier. Um, sometimes the paint on though is a little bit more accurate. So from here on, we're going to have a look and um, at the model. I'm not happy with the model because it doesn't extend all the way down. So in transparent mode, I'm going to, in the C key, I'm going to brush all of the lower vertices, delete the lower vertices. And then I'm going to um, just get a, rid of a few artifacts on the one side. 
uh, delete those uh, faces and then I'm going to recreate a new model base. So this is my lower base and make sure it extends far enough. Actually I'm going to do it with a border that gives me a little bit of a wider model as you can see it will have like a rim going around it. So I'm going to put this into um, a, a copy collection. I've duplicated the that model. I don't need to see it so I always use the little monitor icon to hide the duplicates. Then hit the um, button for select the model to be cut because we are making an analog model so that we can print that. So up and down and then hit the apply cut and clean the model. And we do this for each and every one of these analogs. So again I'm going to do the same thing, select model and cut, choose my analog sleeve, select it and then extrude the top and the bottom and then apply and clean the model. This model is finished and it can then be printed. The next step we need to do is we need to find the correct interfaces which lock into those analog replicas. This is quite easy to do. Make sure that they are visible because we're going to be using these analog replicas for the coordination to snap the interfaces into position. Find your interfaces and then bring them in the scene. Shift D to duplicate those. We need uh, four of those. Two, two, um, two smaller ones and two larger ones in the back post areas. Shift D to duplicate and then we're going to snap these into position. The procedure is very simple. All you need to do is you need to select your analog and then that becomes the destination. That becomes the destination and then select your um, interface and it snaps it into position. Now that the interfaces are in the correct position, we're going to go to the abutment module. The first thing we do is we're going to do a bit of object management. This is our working model. I'm going to hide the analogs. We don't need to see those. And then we're going to select our interfaces and put those into the correct collection. By doing that, we have to watch the face normals that they are correct. We explain this in our videos. And by doing this procedure, it creates a whole lot of other things in the background. Now we need teeth to see how we're going to extrude those. And in this example, we're going to bring in a tooth library. With this tooth library, we're going to select the teeth that we want to use. So click choose teeth and brush the teeth that you want to be using and delete the unwanted teeth. Then we're going to position those teeth. This may take a little bit of time depending on your setup to get the correct setup done. I'm going to go to the wax up module and we're going to do something really quite funky. I'm going to first of all select all of the teeth and remesh them into a more suitable mesh structure. 
This is easily done by selecting all of those teeth and then we're going to sculpt remesh and then we're going to apply that. Then we're going to go select all the teeth and we need to join those teeth. So there's one duplicate teeth I can see so I'm just going to delete it. I'm not sure why it's duplicate. We're going to then select the upper model and that's the one we're mapping to and then we're going to heat map and this is really quite funky because we get to use the heat map and we can sculpt. So all of those red zones are hitting into the occlusion. So actually they are intersecting into the top model. And here all I need to do is to sculpt those down. Instead of cutting the occlusion, I'm merely using a heat map and manipulating my mesh structure so that it goes out of the occlusion. Once I'm done, click on exit. And these teeth we can use at a later stage for our hybrid. Next we're going to go into the abutment module and again I'm going to do a bit of object management that's antagonist and these are all my teeth. And then following that we're going to focus on making our custom abutments. So I'm going to be selecting one after the other and put them into the collection. This will then create all of the necessary assemblies to make these custom abutments. Go to the freeformed collar design and then make an outline. Then use the dropper to shrink wrap that onto to the model. Then I'm going to manipulate this line a little bit and this line will then be sitting on top of the gum so that's sort of the margin of the custom abutment. Then I'm going to hit the curved so you can have a curved or straight profile. and accept this color. By using Alt X we get to use the cross section add-on. This is extremely helpful if you want to see a cross section of what you are doing. So I'm using the R key to rotate it and in the lower window we get to see how the profile of the custom abutment looks like. Let us continue with the next one. The procedure is exactly the same. And again, we're going to check the cross section. Beauty about the cross section is that we can actually focus on the camera. So what you've seen there is a camera clip where we can actually control how deep the camera penetrates the cross section. Let us complete the two others. It is time to extrude these collars into our view. Before that, I've deleted one of the posterior teeth. I'm going to select all of my teeth and turn them into a silhouette. 
The silhouette is vitally important because we get to see through it. Notice how I'm rotating my scene so that I can extrude into my view. These are all parallel to each other. I'm going to briefly select all of them and go into edit mode. This will select the top of them and I'm going to then uh, put this into local view and with the Z slider move those up as high as what I can. And I'm going to scale them and I want them to parallel. Then we're going to be selecting all of these basic designs and we're going to remesh them. The remeshing allows us then to further manipulate these cores. As you can see, I'm going to rotate it, going to edit, and we can then grab this with proportional editing and shape these a little bit. Then I feel that we can smooth them a little bit. Select them all, hit the smooth button and smooth it. Up. Lastly, we'd like to turn these cores into customer buttons. Now, how do we do that? We select the blue interfaces and then click on that button to um, create these red interfaces. Select your core and then we're going to generate that which actually means that it's going to connect to the interface. And this will then complete your custom abutment. We're going to do this for each one of these. So this basically completes our custom abutments. We do not have to make holes through them because the blanks that are used for milling already have holes through those.